ஹாவ் ஏ குட் டே ஐ ஆம் டாக்டர் எஸ் கே ராஜேஷ் கண்ணா ஐ ஆம் கோயிங் டு ஹேண்டில் த டாபிக் எயிட்டி எயிட்டி ஃபைவ் மைக்ரோ ப்ராசஸர் அண்ட் திஸ் செஷன் இஸ் ஃபார் எஸ்பெஷலி ஃபார் த மெக்கானிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஓகே சம் ஆஃப் த எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஷோன் ஹியர் ஆர் ஓன்லி டு விஸ்வலைஸ் இட் ஓகே okay in this 8085 process in the previous class we discussed something about the register okay so this is the syllabus of this 8085 microprocessor and in this set of series of youtube videos you can see this thing one by one okay what is the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller means both are look like the same okay both are having same number of 40 pins the size everything remain the same but only the difference if you see means microprocessor is having external ram and microcontroller having the internal ram microprocessor can do any operation it can control any device okay microcontroller will only control the specific device not the all devices example microprocessor computer plc laptops this and all comes under the mobile phone this and all comes under the micro examples of microprocessor if you take microcontroller it can be a washing machine air conditioner refrigerator everything okay this is for example of the microcontroller okay the speed of the microprocessor is higher the speed of the microcontroller is lower okay uh, so like that we can differentiate the things okay and uh, this is the architecture of microprocessor 8085 okay here this segment is called as the registers b register c register d register e h and l register this is what we discussed in the previous session now we are going to discuss on the remaining registers accumulator like that okay fine so register is nothing but a memory element which stores the data temporarily it is similar to the ram the difference between the ram and the register is the structure wise both are the same okay function wise both are the same the difference is the register can hold 8 bit data that is 8 binary elements the ram can hold any number of data it can be a 1 gb to 64 gb ram rams are available nowadays okay and the second difference is the processor access only the data from the register and not from the ram okay similarly the external user cannot access the register directly but the external user or the peripheral device can access the ram directly so this is the different the processor accepts only the data from the register and it gives the data only to the register so it is the difference between the microprocessor and the microcontroller okay now in this part we discussed on this thing okay c register b register d e h and l there we register how the numbers are stored in the register how it is retrieved back and if the number is more than 8 bit what will happen okay if it is 16 bit number if you are sending or 12 bit number we are sending means the register itself combine together b c d e h l combine into a pair and it will store the data and it will process the data if you are giving more than 64 bit data the register will not do any operations at the time you can receive a command like overflow command or error uh, in overflow the something like that you will get the warning message or the error message okay now we are going to see what is uh, stack pointer okay and this and all discussed in the previous classes now we are going to discuss on the flag register what is a flag register the flag register also the structure wise similar to the other register like b and c only okay it is having only 8 bit memory elements everything is same but the functionality changes we will see the functionality one by one okay suppose if i want to add a two number 15 plus 16 okay what happens the answer is that you know that we know okay in the browser what happens the 
tens digit or ones digit of this 15 and 16 that is 5 and 6 will be given uh, first to the processor okay the 15 16 cannot go let, let us assume like that okay for explanation purpose i am doing this thing okay if you are giving 15 and 16 in the processor actually both the binary number goes uh, add together okay but for explanation purpose we are having some slight changes okay now i want to add 15 and 16 traditionally what we will do we will add a 5 plus 6 the carry we will put over this uh, tens digit and we will add the tens digit along with the carry okay this is the addition operation suppose if you are adding a two number okay 5 plus 6 the answer is 11 so one is in the answer one is in the carry okay suppose that one is in the carry okay that is not known to the browser while it is performing the second operation okay because the browser will add two numbers it added the two number give the result that's all okay the browser doesn't know suppose assume that the browser doesn't know there is element in the tens or there is element in the hundreds in that case who has to tell the browser to add the carry suppose okay if it add the carry okay in the next time whether it has to check whether the carry is there or not if the processor checks every time whether the carry is there or not then the time of browsing or the cycle time is increases thereby the speed reduces so the processor will not uh, check whether the carry is there or not. The processor will check the flag register. Okay. So that only we are using the flag. And this, uh, this is the first example. Suppose if you are typing something in the keyboard. Okay. Well, if you are giving something. At the time, if the processor is free, then only the whatever we are typing that goes to the processor and the processor will process it. Suppose if the processor is busy enough, the processor will not accept the data what we are typing in the keyboard. At the time, what happens? First of all, the keyboard has to tell the processor that something is going to happen in the keyboard. Okay. Suppose if I let us take a printer. If the printer is free, then only only the processor is free then only the processor will give the printout if suppose the printer is busy then what will happen even if you give the printout it will not be come or come in the print okay so whether we have to check the processor is free or not okay how to check the processor is free or not okay suppose the keyboard can ask the processor whether you are free or not yes it is allowable the uh, processor also tell the answer i am free i am not the free yes fine similarly the printer can also ask the processor yeah, are you 885 are you free now or not i want to do some operations okay yes we can the peripherals or the user can ask the browser whether they are free or not but if the browser is telling answer to everyone every peripheral what happens the major duty of the browser is to tell the answer i am free i am free i am free okay and the browser will not do the other type of process so in order to avoid the disturbance to the processor we need some secondary element that has to tell the other devices whether the processor is free or not okay so that device is called as the flag in the computer on the laptop near to the power button there is a amber light is glowing how the light is glowing every time the processor tell the light is to glow no the processor will not tell any LED to glow or not okay what the LED will do, LED check this flag, the flag based on the status of the flag, the light glows. If the flag is says that the processor is busy, the light amber light glows and blinks. If the flag says that the processor is free, the amber light switches off. Okay, so that's all. So this is this element is called as the flag element. Okay, uh, flag element means again it is a temporary storage, it will vary oftenly. Okay, the data present in the flag indicates the status of the microprocessor or the uh, status of the operation carried out by the microprocessor. Okay, so this is the uh, function of the flag element. It is a 8 bit element, it can hold only ones or zeros. Okay, uh, but its main function is you have to keep in mind clearly it will give the status of the microprocessor or the operation to be performed in the microprocessor status of the operation performed in the microprocessor okay if it is zero false if it is one true but these values vary from function to function of the flag okay 
having different meaning for the same values or different uh, flags it is a 8 bit register similar to the previous thing it has it maximum it can show the status of eight activities okay the status is mainly for the processor and uh, the processor will know what's happening based on this flag status okay now this is what we called as the flags here yes flag Z yes means sign flag. Z means uh, zero flag. AC means axillary carry flag. P means parity flag. CY means carry flag. So these are the flags in the 8085. These remaining elements uh, kept as the dummy flag for the future use. Okay, okay. Idhar the flags are affected by the arithmetic and logic operations. Okay. Okay, five. We will see one by one. The first flag is the yes flag. Yes flag means sign flag. As the name indicates, it gives the sign for the output of the processor. Suppose if you are adding a two number, ten plus two, the answer is plus twelve. So that plus sign is indicated by this flag only. If you are adding two number minus ten, uh, sorry, two minus ten, the answer is minus eight. That minus sign is indicated by this sign flag. Okay. If the flag is one. That is uh, high voltage. One is nothing but binary one means zero point. Uh, sorry, five volt is given to that memory element. Okay, either the five volt or binary one, both are same. Okay, if we, so that only we are calling it as the high or low value. Okay, if it is high or binary one, then it indicates the sign for the number is plus. If it is zero, it indicates sign for that number is minus. Suppose if you are adding. 2 minus 10 that is you are subtracting 2 minus 10 then automatically the flag value becomes 0 that means the processor knows that this is minus 8 okay if you are adding 10 plus 2 you are getting plus 12 at that time the sign flag value became 1 at the time the processor knows that the sign for this value 12 is plus and it displays the same so this is what we called as sign flag okay well Okay, so next thing is the zero flag, that is the EZ flag. EZ flag used to indicate the status of the processor. Okay, if this EZ flag, for example, EZ flag is 1, then it indicates the accumulator is full. Once if the accumulator is full, automatically the processor is doing some operation. Okay, if it indicates it is 0, the accumulator is free. There is no data is there. It is uh, ready to accept the data. The processor is free. That is the meaning. Okay, if it is 1, the amber light glows. If it is 0, the amber light in the CPU or laptop will not glow. Okay, so it indicates, it is used to indicate whether the processor is free. Suppose if the keyboard want to know the processor is free or not, it is not necessary to ask the processor. Just it will check this D6 pin. In the D6 pin, if the value is 1, it indicates the processor is busy. In the D6 pin, if the value is 0, it indicates the processor is free. Okay, similarly the printer wants to know also, the printer only checks the D6 pin. It will not ask the process every time whether you are free or not like that. Okay, similarly for the mouse or any peripheral connected to the system, if the peripheral or the user want to know whether the processor is free or not, it is not necessary to ask the processor, just check the D6 pin. It is more than sufficient, the D6 pin tell you the status of the processor. Okay. And next we are going to axillary carry pin. This is what is the axillary carry that is AC means. Um, for example, only for the example purpose, visualization purpose, just think it of you are adding some two digit numbers. Okay. And you are getting a three digit number. The third digit is the carry fire. That third digit is called as the axillary carry. Suppose I am adding binary 11 and binary 11. Okay. Well, so while you are adding this two number, you will get... 100 okay that is you are adding two binary two digit numbers you are getting binary three digit number 11 one, one plus 11 one, one gives 100 that you knows okay or 110 something 
okay so the third digit is called as the axillary carry okay this example is only for the understanding purpose okay this is what we called as the axillary carry okay if you are adding one and one at the time what you will get the answer is zero you will get one carry that carry is not the axillary carry that carry is simply called as the carry that is denoted in the d0 pin okay well so difference between the carry and axillary carry for understanding purpose let us assume this example okay okay so next is the parity flag parity flag the name implies it is used to know the number is odd number or even number okay suppose suppose if the resulting this value is high that is the binary 1 for this pin okay d2 pin is high with binary 1 it indicates the number given by the processor or the result from the processor is a even number if it is zero the output given by the processor is odd number okay well, this even number and odd number can be used by the software developers for many purpose suppose for example if you want to take the print out only the odd pages or only the even pages at the time this will be useful okay well, and uh, there is lot other applications also okay this is what we called as the parity flag and next thing is the carry flag as i already mentioned carry flag means if there is adding two number if you are adding a 9 plus 2 you are getting 11 so one is the answer and remaining one is called as the carry okay if it is set to high if this pin d not is high one binary one the processor knows that there is some carry carry value we have to add that value to to get the right answer so the processor will add the carry with the result value so Suppose if it is set to zero, the processor knows that there is no carry value, no need to add any other thing with the result, and it gives the result as such. Okay, well, so this is what we called as the carry flag. Okay, and next thing, if you are taking the remaining three, D5, D3, and D, D1. these are called as the dummy flags nothing is going to happen in this thing whether it is zero or one nobody is going to bother about it the spin will not be read by the processor at the any time and user will not read this spin at any time so it is called as the dummy pin why they are they having the dummy pin means the minimum memory capacity is the 8 bit element so for manufacturing difficulty we have to only fabricate 8 bit memory only minimum okay so we are having 8 bit and all the status is over so this pins are kept as dummy or a second option this pins can be used by the softwares in future okay remaining carry flag or flag, axillary carry or parity flag will not be disturbed by any of the software the the processor will not allow to disturb those flags but we can some of the software may use this dummy flags for their purpose to know the status okay so that is what we called as the dummy flag so now we completed the b register c register now we completed the flags the next thing is the program counter what is program counter okay well, the name implies it will count the number of lines executed in the program or the lines to be executed in the program to the processor okay suppose you are writing a 10 line c program okay the 10 line c program the instructions are lines is called as the instructions normally that instructions or the c program lines or the commands can be stored anywhere in the memory okay the processor will not know where and all that stored okay in order to tell the processor where that instructions are stored and what are the instructions to be executed in sequence which sequence it has to be executed that and all tell by the program counter only based on the instruction given by the program counter only the processor operates it will not bother about what the program you written what the program you had that is not a problem of your processor the processor only execute the commands or the instructions stored in the program counter one by one or where the program counter points that instruction will be executed by the processor okay well, okay suppose if you are writing a 10 lines that address of the 
టెన్ లైన్స్ ఈ స్టోర్డ్ ఇన్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ కౌంటర్ ఓకే సో ద ఫస్ట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ కౌంటర్ ఇనిషియల్ టు జీరో వన్స్ ఇఫ్ దట్ కమాండ్ ఇస్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటివ్ ఇట్ గోస్ టు వన్ నెక్స్ట్ టు త్రీ లైక్ దట్ ఇట్ గోస్ ఓకే ఇవ వెన్ ఎవర్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ పాయింట్ పాయింటర్ పాయింట్స్ ఏ మెమరీ ఎలిమెంట్ ద ప్రాజర్ రీడ్ ద అడ్రస్ ఆఫ్ దట్ ఎలిమెంట్ అండ్ ఇట్ గోస్ టు దట్ మెమరీ రీడ్ దట్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ ఎగ్జిక్యూట్ దట్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ వన్స్ ద ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ ఇస్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటెడ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ కౌంటర్ ఇంక్రిమెంటెడ్ టు ప్లస్ వన్ సో ఇట్ గోస్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ లెవెల్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఎగ్జిక్యూట్ ద కమాండ్స్ వన్ బై వన్ ఓకే సో ఎగైన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ సిక్స్టీన్ బిట్ మెమరీ ఎలిమెంట్ ఓకే వీ కెన్ స్టోర్ ద లెట్ ఇస్ అస్యూమ్ దట్ యూ కెన్ స్టోర్ సిక్స్టీన్ అడ్రస్ ఇన్ దట్ థింగ్ ఓకే సపోజ్ ఐఎమ్ హ్యావింగ్ ఏ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ లైక్ దట్ ఏ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు టెన్ ఐఎమ్ రైటింగ్ ఏ సి ప్రోగ్రామ్ వైడ్ మైన్ ఏ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు టెన్ బి ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు టూ సి ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఏ ప్లస్ బి ప్రింట్ సి ఓకే వా ఇట్ ఈస్ ఓన్లీ ఫర్ ద విజువలైజేషన్ పర్పస్ ఓకే విజువలైజేషన్ ఆర్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ పర్పస్ దిస్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇస్ గివెన్ ఓకే ఇన్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ లెట్ ఇస్ అస్యూమ్ దట్ ద లైన్ నెంబర్ ఇస్ ద అడ్రస్ ఆఫ్ దట్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ ఓకే సో ఏ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టెన్ ఇస్ వన్ అడ్రస్ ఇస్ వన్ బి ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టూ ఈస్ అడ్రస్ ఇస్ టూ సి ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఏ ప్లస్ బి అడ్రస్ ఇస్ త్రీ ప్రింట్ ఆఫ్ అడ్రస్ ఇస్ ఫోర్ అండ్ దర్ ఈస్ ఏ ఎన్ కమాండ్ ఇఫ్ యూ క్లోజ్ బ్రాకెట్ మీన్స్ ఎన్ కమాండ్ ఇన్ ద సి ప్రోగ్రామ్ యూ విల్ నాట్ గివ్ ఎన్ దర్ ఓకే నౌ ఇన్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ కౌంటర్ యూ క్యాన్ సి దిస్ వాల్యూస్ ఆర్ స్టోర్డ్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఫేషన్ so first to 1 2 3 4 and end okay these are the addresses what the browser will do first it will read the address 1 okay okay if it read the address 1 directly it goes to the memory element where the address 1 is there in that address it start read the instruction in the instruction we are giving a is equal to uh, some value is it correct a is equal to 10 so the program execute a is equal to 10 at this stage next after execution after assigning a is equal to 10 the program counter increments to 1 so from 1 the pointer moves to 2 okay well, then if the um, uh, browser start reading the data stored in the address 2 in the address 2 we are having b is equal to 2 so it execute and assign b is equal to 2 value okay next to the program counter incremented to 3 that is incremented to plus 1 so it became 3 so it uh, read the address of the 3 in the memory in the address 3 we are having the syntax c is equal to b a plus b so it will add the a value and b value a value is 10 b value is 2 so it will add that 2 value yeah, they, it will get us 12 that value is stored in the c memory okay wa? so that the command is executed so again it is incremented to plus 1 so it became 4 here okay what is the fourth command fourth command in the address we are having print of statement so it will print the value of the c in the monitor okay so after that it will increment to plus one there it see a n command once if you see the n command the browser assumes that the program is executed completely so it comes out of that line then the once if everything if it reaches the end command automatically the inc- the program counter reset itself to the first zero then it load the second program or the second operation and then it execute one by one okay it will increment one by one only in the sequence okay whatever the address stored in this element that will be executed by the processor once if the operations are executed it will reset to zero that means it erase all the data in it okay for example if th- this is the the sample address stored in the um, program counter okay it will read the data stored in the address one by one that is in the sequence only once it reaches the last element then it reset to the first element so this is what we called as the program counter based on the program counter only the processor operates <coughs> okay so now we have discussed on the registers program counters flags the next element is the stack pointer okay what does mean by a stack pointer it is a mm, stack of memory elements here there is lot of concept that sir first in first out first in last out last in first out last in last out lot of concepts are there as a mechanical engineering student we are not going to much concentrate on those elements okay just we are going to see what is mean by a stacking 
Now assume that in the program counter we are having the elements horizontally. Okay, program counter the elements are stored horizontally, but in stack the elements are stored in the vertical fashion. Okay, one by one over the other. Stacking of data one over the other is called as the stack memory. Okay. What this stack memory is doing, the purpose of the stack memory are so similar to that of the program counter. Okay, for understanding purpose, only for visualization purpose, I am giving one example. Visualize it, you can understand what is stack pointer. Okay, suppose if you are opening a MS Word file, you are typing something. Okay, after 10 seconds or 30 seconds, that data will be automatically saved in the page file saved in a uh, content called as page file okay then you are typing some other thing that also saved as a page file 2 again it is saved as page file 3 after some time it saved as page file 4 after some times okay so like that whatever you are ch made some changes that will be saved as a page file in the temporary memory suppose if you are saved the file then the last page file is saved as a in your file name okay suppose if you are doing undo at the time what happens the page file only goes one back one back one back like that okay well suppose if there is eight page file then you can do eight undos suppose if there is ten page file you can do ten undos okay now assume that these page files are stored in the stack one over the other if you do undo it will come one by one by below one one below one below like that okay if you go to redo it will go one above one above one above so assume that the page files are stored in the stack one over the other whenever required whatever required we can extract it like that the instructions are stored one over the other in the stack okay this is the example of the stack pointers okay up to this what we discussed in the previous session we discussed what is microprocessor what is microcontroller then we discussed what is the registers b register c d e h and l okay in the second session we discussed <coughs> What is mean by flags? What is mean by program counter? What is mean by stack pointer? Okay, I hope up to this you will not have any doubts. Okay, in the next class we will discuss on the accumulator and we are going to discuss on the temporary register and other elements. Okay, if you have any doubt you can mail me. My ID is skirkanadgmail.com or you can WhatsApp me. I will give you the answers. Okay, okay, thank you.